What's up, YouTube? MK40 here. The duel that you just watched, I wanted to talk about uh, just because there's salt brewing in my veins, uh, because I feel that uh, I want to analyze it and uh, talk about the particular interactions that you guys uh, saw between uh, the Noble Knight and the Gadget uh, build. Um, if you guys noticed, I did open up relatively bad. Um, that's neither here nor there. Um, but as you see, I tried to make the most optimal plays um, that I could do. Um, you know, Noble Knights do their thing. Um, you know, Gawain and the noble guy uh, make very strong XYZ plays uh, and things like that. But the thing that I'm particularly interested in is the interaction of Beelzebub and Silent Honors against that particular deck. Yes, they do get them added to their arsenal as well. But um, looking at the match, uh, Beelzebub allows you to take care of the spell cards twice. Um, so you don't have to worry about them re-equipping themselves. So if you guys are worried about that particular matchup, um, don't worry about it. Uh, Beelzebub will take care of everything for you. Um, also, if they start to outnumber you, you can just nuke their board. Um, also, um, as you guys seen, the big mace stroke is very easily taken care of with 101. Um, it's not much of a problem. Uh, but um, those things are basically the biggest plays that those decks particularly have at this point in time. Unless, you know, when we find out what support these guys get. Let me see the Valiant. Uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about is what I felt was my biggest misplay. Um, and it's near the end of the video when I actually brought out Silent Arc. Um, I should have brought out Silent Arc in defense mode because my life points were a thousand. Um, I didn't take into consideration uh, the fact that he gets the ability to equip directly from the deck. Um, and I felt that was my biggest misplay. And I actually wanted to talk about um, that a little bit more in depth. Um, because when your life points are that low, uh, typically, you know, you really don't want to take risk. Uh, because taking risk at that point in the game, um, especially with a deck with that kind of explosive power, um, it's not something that you really want to risk. Um, and considering the fact that his hand size was very limited um, at the time, too, um, I felt that having the 2100 on the board at the time would be accurate. The actual real play that I should have done was put it up in defense mode. Um, that way I did have the max C, so when he went to do the plays, um, he's not going to get to recruit off of the level 5 synchro, uh, because Silent Arc Honor is going to detach uh, to float and just stay there because it's a mage stroke as well. Uh, and the other thing is, I could very easily deal with it on the next turn looking at what my hand was. <laughs> so, I'm just... Uh, there's just salt in my veins because a misplay like that I shouldn't have made um, and should have been, you know, a little bit better. So, in today's topic, Robbie's salty. Uh, but that's nonetheless. So, guys, um, look at the dual video again. Um, see um, which plays you guys feel were optimal. Uh, which plays that you feel, you know, were not so strong. You know, granted, I didn't open up a gadget for that particular hand. Things would have been so much better. Like, the entire time I was playing the game, I'm like, draw gadget, nope, draw gadget, nope. Uh, it's just things like that. Uh, but, you know, try to make the best out of the hands that you're given uh, at Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, as for optimal plays, like I said, uh, try to figure out which ones are particularly the best for you. Um, you know, try to figure out what is best for the other person as well. Trying to read what they're going to do. Um, it's just, you know, you gotta understand what their deck is capable of and things like that. Um, and having enough answers, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about particular things like that. So, looking at that matchup, I definitely felt that I should have won that game. Um, it's just making a misplay in that situation or making what I thought was the accurate play at the point in time and then you know just losing because of Lady of the Lake there's not much you can do after all it's just Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes we get burnt out by worse things I mean it always seems like at regionals your opponent always has the dark hole when you overextend you know things like that uh, but I just want to do talk about this a little bit um, would you have guys have brought out the silent arc in attack mode would you have brought out in defense mode um, would you have done what I did? Would you have done something different? Um, there's not really much else I can ask. I'm just kind of curious to get the general opinion of you guys. So, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I gotta get this salt out of my veins. That's why I had to make this video. Um, I'm not mad at Noble Knights. Like I said, they are a good deck. I've known this for some time. It's just the plays that they make, I don't feel are optimal for them to be competitive. And even still after the set release, I'm still not overly impressed. Um, and you guys will see in like several of my dual videos that I posted on streams and whatnot, that the deck is just easy to break. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I know that you guys are going to continue to say that the deck is good. Yes, the deck is good. 100%.
the deck is good. It's just the deck as itself still needs more to function, plus the next ban list might help. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So, like I said, I even got the whole like core going here. All this stuff. So, yeah. So, thumbs up this video if you guys do want to see my spin on Noble Derps. Um, I'll get to that eventually. I have to go find my Medruts. They're somewhere off. So, and yeah. Sorry for kind of raging on. Later, guys.